brothers and sisters, welcome to another teaching time. You know what? Here's something I don't say enough. If you got questions, ask. All right. If you've got questions, ask. Be respectful. Um, but if you got questions, ask. A lot of times I'll do a video based on a question. Actually, this video is based on a comment um, that somebody made, and we were talking about it a little bit. And I thought I would come back and make a um, video about it. So open up your Bibles to, to Daniel 12. And we're going to look at something. It's very brief. But it's a prophecy you and I are fulfilling right now as I speak. Literally. You are. I am. We're doing this. So we're going to open up the Bibles to Daniel 12. And there is so much in Daniel 12. I love this chapter. But I promise to make this short. At least I promise myself. So. Let me see, where do we want to start? Um, give me a second here. Verse 4. Daniel 12, 4. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the times of the end. That's the last days. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Okay, this is a verse. I just want to talk about this verse, you know. A lot of people misunderstand it. I was always taught, wow, you know, look at, like, many will go to and fro for thousands of years. Oh, my goodness. Man was confined to the speed of a horse or to the speed of a boat, you know, with the wind. Now we got planes, trains, automobiles, rockets. We're going faster than we've ever gone before. And information increasing, you know, the computers and how much stuff they can hold. That information is increasing, like it doubles every four or five years. The amount of information we have doubles. Wow, we're in the last days based on that, right? No, that's not what this verse is about. Okay, what is the topic here? It's the words and the book. What words and what book? It's prophecy. The prophecy that Daniel was given. And Daniel is one of the most prophetic people in the Bible. Oh my goodness. Now, a lot of the Jews, the Jews didn't think so, I tell you. Do you know in a, in a Jewish Tanakh, Daniel is not even considered prophecy. It's not listed with the prophets, it's listed with the other teachings. Why? Well, if you'd have looked closely at Daniel 9, you would have seen when Christ would have been back. You would have seen when the Messiah would have been back, and they missed it. Anyhow, that's not the point. What this is, so the topic is prophecy. That in the last days, these books, that prophecy is going to be opened up. The books about prophecy, the words of prophecy are going to be opened. And I think that's very much true. And what it means for you and me is that as we get closer to the day, those who are watching will know. I'll be right back. I've got a puppy in the house, a two and a half month old lab, and I hear her whining. Give me a second. All right. So I said I had a puppy, a two and a half month old puppy that was whining. This is Melody Grace. Oh, what a great girl. I call her Melly. But yeah, she was uh, whining for me. She does that. But then again, she's a puppy. That's part of her job description. So let me finish this video, Melly. So yeah, we are fulfilling this right now. See, I believe that many going to and fro is Facebook groups, YouTube videos, Twitter, that people are sharing knowledge all over the place. We're not confined to books. We're not confined to um, pastors' teachings. And a lot of the pastors' teachings, though, are on videos because a lot of times people were confined to books, the Bible, what they got from the Bible themselves, and their pastor, what their pastor said. And you know how many pastors are following prophecy? Yeah, I know, not that many. Um, I believe, based on this, that before the rapture, we're going to know when. Not everybody, because not everybody's watching, okay? Not everybody cares. Half of the people, believe it or not, and this is a product of the Catholic Church, half of the people who call themselves Christians, Christians are preterists. They believe all prophecy was already done. Why? Because that's what Rome told them. Why? Because there's a lot of stuff in the uh, book of Revelation that's not good about the Catholic Church. 
But if it was all fulfilled prior to the Catholic Church, then, you know, hey, we're good. Deception. Um, I believe, see, give me an example of this. Just two things real quick. And I mean, I could go on and give you lists. One day, when I heard somebody speaking, and he talked about how a week of years, tribulation is a week of years, could not start any year. It has to start in the beginning of a week of years because it's a week of years on God's calendar. That one blew me away. Wow, the rapture can't be in a year. It has to be once every seven years. If you can only find out from Scripture, not because Jonathan Kahn, not because this person tells you when these weeks of years are, but if you can find it in Scripture, it was a mind blower. There was a year and a half later, listening to somebody else, and they pointed out in Daniel. Let's go back to Daniel 9. Daniel 9, everybody goes to 27, but look at 26. After 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. If he's cut off after a seven or a week of years, he's cut off in the first year of a week of years. Tribulation has to start in the first year of a week of years. So if you know when he's crucified, you can do the math and you can find out when is the first year of a week of years and figure out how, you know, every seven years when tribulation can start. I hope you're following this. If not, go back and listen to it. It's actually a lot simpler than it seems. He's crucified in 30 AD. When you understand that the rapture is in the fall, that's when a year starts. And the tribulation, excuse me, the rapture in the fall. And that's when... Um, tribulation starts and the rapture is, but he was crucified in the spring at the end of the year. So you've got to take a year off when you do your calculations. If you do the math, if it's a 49-year jubilee cycle, it's 2024 that the rapture is. If you do a 50-year jubilee cycle, it's 2029. It's that simple. Um, I believe a lot of other things, and I believe there'll be other things that actually confirm this, if I'm right. If I'm right in this assertion of when the rapture can happen other things will come out from scripture to prove that between now and then anyhow um yeah so quit thinking about plane trains automobiles and computers when you hear about people going to and fro and information greatly increasing that's not what it's about anyhow god bless you thank you for watching take care